so uh, this is uh, the uh, last lecture connected with our text on Kumarajiva and it is concerned this meeting is being recorded okay continue it is concerned with uh, the uh, divine I Divya Chakshu Divya Chakshu is uh, the last in the order and the order of Kumarajiva is the same like in the northern tradition you will find the same order in uh, Abhidharma Kosha, and also in uh, the northern tradition, in Visuddhimagga and in scriptures like uh, 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 Samanya Fala, uh, Sutta, and so on. So uh, why this uh, divine eye is uh, last, and it is in a way most important for understanding uh, Buddhism. We have already explained that Buddha, the Sakyamuni Buddha, according to the tradition, he got his body under the body tree due to using, purifying his uh, jhanas. His jhanas have, have been purified before. He has practiced them. Uh, under different teachers but he uh, since he has been practicing uh, uh, austerities for such a long time for six years according to tradition so he had to purify them again under the body tree and then he used them for the knowledge of his previous abodes Pube Nivasa and for the divine I. We have already mentioned that if an arahat becomes an important arahat, the maha arahat, he has the tevija, the three knowledges, the knowledge of the uh, asavakaya, of the uh, defilements being uprooted, knowledge of the pube nivasa also, and knowledge of the divine eye. These are the Tevija, which are the most important three aspects of the training in the supernatural powers. And the reason being that they lead to the knowledge of the past, that is a Pube Nivasa, and also to the knowledge of the future. One who has the divine eye, he has a knowledge of the future. He knows himself uh, what is expected if he is an arahat, so he knows that there is no more life. If he is not an arahat, if he is a bodhisattva, if he is a, a non-fully accomplished uh, disciple, then he can see his uh, future. We have explained when one has a jhana, one can investigate the bhavanga. The bhavanga, same like alaya, same like prapti, uh, attainment in the in the Sarvastivada tradition, explain the continuity of the mind, the continuity of existence, because unless you explain the continuity of existence, you cannot explain the dependent origination because dependent origination precisely explains how the life continues. So uh, if one has knowledge of the past and knowledge of the future, then uh, he can uh, uproot uh, to great extent in case of an arahat, the ignorance. Because ignorance is also the knowledge of the past and knowledge of the future. Uh, so uh, the divine eye, how to practice? The text explains, you have to practice those uh, 
mental images which are connected with powerful light, which means either the Aloka Casina, the light Casina, or the fire Casina. These are the two uh, Casinas, two uh, spheres of totality, which are connected with the uh, powerful perception of light. So using these uh, two casinas, one goes into the fourth dhyana, as we have learned, the state of the uh, uh, supernatural knowledges is a state of fourth dhyana. But as opposed to the fourth dhyana without supernatural knowledges, when one has super knowledge, supernatural knowledges, one can use the power of force dhyana to practice vipassana. And in a way, the seeing of the past lives and the, the seeing of the future is also part of the vipassana. In order to understand the dependent origination in all traditions, it is explained, we have to know the past because the ignorance and the uh, will formations take place in the past. You have to understand the present and you ha have to understand the future because the birth, aging, uh, death, and uh, all the things uh, connected with it, all the suffering connected with the process of birth and death is uh, connected with the future experience. So strictly speaking, you have to have the knowledge of the past and knowledge of the future to understand uh, the law of dependent origination. And it is explained in all traditions, even though explained in different way, that the law of dependent origination is the subject matter of the realization of the fully enlightened Buddha. Uh, as opposed to other arahats, his knowledge or bodhisattvas, his knowledge of the uh, past and future is complete. Also, of course, his knowledge of the present, that means of the faculties of others of the, and uh, of the different uh, rupas and namas which he can see directly. So here uh, one uses this uh, light image, light uh, pratibimba, which means exactly reflection. Hmm? This is very important because actually what we, as far as Yogacara is concerned, what we experience is only the reflections in the mind. And uh, then uh, when one uh, uses the supernatural powers, we have explained how to use the supernatural powers. One goes into the fourth dhyana, then make a de determination, adhisthana, to see what one wants to see. And then with the power of this determination and with the power of the previous practice of this idipadas, which we have explained, which make the samadhi very powerful and the strength of the mind depends on the strength of the samadhi, strength of the dhyana. This is a very important principle to understand. Now, with the strength of mind of the purified force dhyana, one and with the determination, one determines what one wants to experience and he will be taken to that experience. And the experience of the uh, divine eye is the experience of the superior, inferior, beautiful states, the non-beautiful states of beings. Uh, of course, if he has a method, then he can also connect it with the uh, state of mind. Then he pays attention 
if anyone wants to practice a divine eye, how you practice it? You pay attention to a dying person or you pay attention to a person who is not dying, but you take his babanga to the last process, which is possible for the one who has a knowledge of dhyanas. And then he sees what comes after the chuti. This uh, divine eye is also called chuti, chuti upapati jnana. Chuti upapati jnana. That means due to the divine eye, you can see how a person, in what condition, what rupa and what nama, the person is dying. And you can see in what condition, what rupa and nama, he is continuing. So on this, you can then very well also estimate what kind of existence he is going to be reborn in, whether in the dying process or whether in the future. This is very important. And uh, the scriptures explain very, uh, very clearly. If one has a powerful mind, then one can go to the end of one's life. One can know one's life span. And then one can know what is happening after the lifespan has reached the end. And he will see his future in terms of his rupa, if it is superior or inferior, or in terms of his nama. So if he has, if he is a practitioner of uh, the disciple uh, vehicle, he wants to finish with the suffering of the samsara. So he will see, aha, I have so many lives left. Hmm? So he gets nibida. So he can actually see due to his practice of nibida, due to this practice of disenchantment from the nama and rupa, he can actually see very clearly how many lives are left. And if he's practicing hard, aha, now one, one more, one life less, two lives less, oh, I can make end to this uh, existence in the next life. No doubt about it, because no more lives are being shown. All this can be uh, clearly experienced on the base of the divine eye. What is divine eye? The text explains very clearly, just as uh, the Mahavibhasa, the text is using more or less the same material as Mahavibhasa when you check. Also, Abhidharma Kosha explains that the divine eye is actually the eye of the beings in the Rupadhatu, especially in the higher spheres of Rupadhatu, where the uh, Nama and Rupa is uh, more purified. Then he can see very clearly with this uh, subtle eye, which is called the divine eye, Actually, in Buddhism, in order to get full clarity, we have to practice uh, the uh, eye of wisdom. We have to practice the, if we are bodhisattvas, we have to practice, uh, aspire for the eye of the Buddha, which can see uh, limitless. Then you have the uh, mam mamsa chakshu, the uh, flesh eye, and you have the divine eye. Hmm? And all these eyes can be acquired uh, on the base of meditation, of course. Hmm? So for the uh, divine eye, as we have explained, you don't need necessarily to be an arahat. Even a commoner can attain the divine eye if he has mastered the Dhyanas, especially the Kasina, the 
Aloka Casino, the Light Casino, and the uh, Fire Casinos, which are the base for luminosity. This luminosity then penetrates the whole being. And this luminosity you can do by taking the sun as an object, by taking moon as an object, by taking a lamp as the object, by taking fire as the object. And uh, with this uh, natural luminosity, you can, uh, this natural luminosity can come in a natural way if it is karma vipaka, if one is born in the rupa datu, or in our sphere of existence, in the karma datu, the higher sphere of karma datu, for the gods of karma datu, karma datu, and for the gods of, uh, for the human beings in karma datu, uh, the, uh, this ability for divine eye comes through bhavana, through meditation practice. So you have actually two kinds of divine eye. One is acquired through bhavana and one is acquired by birth through karma vipaka. So these uh, beings who have this karma vipaka of the divine eye, the being, the brahmas, the being in the higher sphere of rupa, they can also see all kinds of things which are not accessible to the mamsa chakshu, to the uh, eye, to the fleshy eye. So uh, this divine eye, then you can use uh, according to the text to see uh, the, all the different lands without obstacles, starting with, of course, with our land. Hmm? Our land is, uh, uh, or at least uh, our land in India, if we are in India, we are in Jambudvipa. India is supposed to be Jambudvipa. And it is called the Jambudvipa because it is on the southern slope of the, uh, of the Meru mountain. Hmm? And uh, it, is, uh, it starts with uh, the uh, Jambu tree. Hmm? And the other Dvipas, uh, Uttarakuru and so on, they all have uh, also the trees uh, under uh, the uh, uh, Meru mountain, which so uh, give the uh, scope of uh, their area. So there is kind of a, a forest, which is described here. Uh, the sees the trees of the iron mountains surrounded by the uh, Mount Sumeru. Hmm? Then these uh, iron mountains, then also they are uh, connected with the continents. The um, four main continents and the eight, uh, the, the sub small continents or how, how they call it. Hmm? So, but what is very important for Kumarajiva especially, we should not, uh, we should remember that Kumarajiva is the translator of the Lotus Sutra. He is also the translator of the Amitayu Sutta. Hmm? So you can also use this divine eye to see the pure lands. The pure lands belong to the uh, meditation of the bodhisattvas, of course. Hmm? This is a kind of a privilege of the bodhisattvas to be able to see the pure lands. Sutras uh, like uh, the Avatamsaka Sutra and so on explain that the Shravakas cannot see them because they don't practice the pure land. Actually, the Mahayana practice is the practice of the pure land. Mahayana 
and the practice of the pure lands uh, cannot be really separated. So uh, this is one of the differences between so-called, I don't like this name, Mahayana and the so-called disciple of the disciples. So he sees the pure lands and since he sees the pure lands, pure lands are uh, when one has the divine eye and is uh, practicing the practice of the Bodhisattva when he's developing not only the Dhammakaya and the Nirmanakaya, but also developing the uh, Sambhogakaya. So he can see this uh, pure lens in all directions. And so he understands precisely as the, the Lotus Sutra is teaching that actually uh, all Buddhas are equal and all Buddhas teach uh, the same. Hmm? According to Lotus Sutra, the uh, primordial Buddha appears to witness that the teaching of the uh, Sakyamuni is precisely the teaching that all the previous Buddhas have also delivered, including himself. And uh, what is very important here, this uh, brings us to the uh, Mahayana practice, especially explained in the Avatamsaka Sutra. In uh, the Avatamsaka Sutra, one actually through the uh, meditation practice with the help of the, uh, of the Kalyana Mitras, he can uh, eventually attain all the powers of the Buddha. So he can see uh, how, uh, what kind of uh, abilities the beings have. He can see the beings in different uh, states of existence, what kind of uh, abilities they have to receive Dharma and what Dharma, and he can teach them accordingly. So again, like the previous knowledges, uh, here also it is emphasized the greatest miracle is not like uh, walking in the sky, but is Adesana Patiharya, the miracle of teaching. It's des, adesan, Desana Patiharya and Anusasana Patiharya. They are the greatest miracles to be achieved by supernatural powers so that one can convert all beings to practice the good states of existence. The uh, uh, Dasa Kusala Karmapatha. So uh, one with this ability will be able to convert innumerable beings and uh, bring them to the uh, states of better existence. Also the beings in hell, the beings in, in the in hungry ghost and so on. So he can actually even see them reborn in the better states of existence. So which will uh, give him deeper knowledge of cause and effect. And because uh, he is able to see with a pure eye uh, and uh, with wisdom, so he will see actually, this is very important to understand, he will actually see the original purity of the mind. According to the uh, Buddhist teachings, Buddha first taught the Four Noble Truths, then he second turning of the wheel of dharma is the uh, the emptiness the atyanta sunyata the emptiness being the ultimate nature of all the phenomena the only characteristic of all the phenomena and the third 
uh, turning of the wheel actually for all Buddhist traditions, no, not only Yogacara, but also Madhyamika, is actually the re revelation of the pure mind. Hmm? This is very important, especially of, uh, for the Tantric tradition. Uh, the uh, systems of meditation of the Tantric traditions, be it uh, Mahamudra, be it uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dzogchen, be it uh, the different tantras, they are all based on this uh, concept of the originally pure mind, which is to be realized. So uh, when the mind becomes pure, all the phenomena becomes pure. Because all the phenomena becomes pure, one sees all the defilements as uh, something completely unsubstantial. And this is how one can help innumerable beings. Because when the mind is purified, the phenomena are purified. Because the phenomena and the mind cannot be separated. So uh, when the mind is purified, all the phenomena become pure. The, and this is uh, the pure lens. The pure lens is nothing but the contemplation of the pure phenomena on the base of the purified mind. This purified mind can be attained either by one's effort or can be attained by the grace of the Buddha or of the Buddhas. Usually most popular of the Buddha Amitabha, which presides the uh, Sukhavati, the Western universe of the perfect happiness. So uh, then he will he will also on the base of this he will stop to differentiate between the vehicles. This is uh, no wonder uh, Kumarajiva is a translator of the Lotus Sutra. Actually, there is only one vehicle, and this is a vehicle of the perfect Buddhahood. So uh, the three vehicles, according to the Lotus Sutra, which the Kumarajiva has taught and translated, the other vehicles, they are only skillful means for realizing the only real supreme vehicle which is the vehicle of the perfect Buddhahood, which has unlimited vision, unlimited wisdom, and unlimited understanding of all the uh, samsaric states of existence. And how to use skillful means to improve and uh, to realize better states of existence in future life. And this is done exactly on the base of this divine eye. So uh, this divine eye, because it can see the future, it can also see the karmic causes and effects of all sentient beings in the six states of existence in the 10 directions. So uh, this is the penetration of the perfect understanding of the dependent origination. Because the dependent origination is not limited to one's own existence. It is a universal understanding of existences in all states of existence due to causes and conditions. Because everything that appears, appeared in the past, will appear in the future, appears only on the base of the cause and effect. And the cause and effect is a momentary process. This is very important. Uh, the, uh, that's why the cause and effect cannot be strictly divided because they are momentary process. This is a deep penetration of the deep mind which can then 
on the base of this penetration uh, attain the uh, fast realization of the uh, liberated mind by seeing very clearly the uh, cause and effect is relative to the conventional reality only. And the conventional reality is actually uh, in its very nature uh, ungraspable. So due to this, he will not allow the perception of real beings to arise to the power of his wisdom. Hmm? So because he sees that cause and effect precisely as the Visuddhimaga explains, can neither be one nor different. This is a secret of the uh, dreamlike nature of samsara dream-like nature of our existence. This is because all phenomena are free from the notion of real beings. Even so, the practitioner of the divine eye perceives the continuity of karma and its result. He also enters into the sphere uh, where all dharmas are devoid of karma and its result. So. It means the sphere of nirvana, the sphere of suchness. The sphere of suchness, sphere of nirvana is not changing precisely because it is devoid of karma and its result. So even so, El Arahat still reaps the, his karma from the previous life, like or from his own last life, like uh, Angulimala, when he attains the end of samsaric existence, this karma and uh, the result becomes irrelevant because he has transcended the samsaric state. The samsaric state is a state of uh, cause and result. So uh, due to this understanding, he connects this understanding of divine eye with Vipassana. Due to this, through his wisdom, through his Vipassana, which is another word for wisdom, he can clearly discern without any falsity, without any uh, distortion, that uh, actually all forms are inseparable from emptiness. And due to that, he does not catch, he, do, he does not hold, he does not grasp for the signs of the forms. He does not grasp, because he does not grasp, grasp at the signs, he is liberated. He is liberated because of his understanding of the illusionary nature of the samsaric existence. Uh, in the samsaric existence, there is nothing that can be grasped. So uh, he can see this through this divine eye, all these uh, different uh, forms exactly as Abhidharma describes the 11 forms of Rupa, near and far, gross and subtle, uh, and so on. And uh, he can also see the causes which, through which these forms have taken, uh, have come to existence. And he can also see how these forms can change. So uh, with this, we will finish uh, today's lecture. I think our time has more or less passed and we have covered all 
as far as I can see, all the important points uh, that uh, we have uh, in, uh, uh, in our text. So these are the meanings of different supernatural powers as explained in detail in the Mahayana. Uh, actually, not only explained in the Mahayana, in the Abhidharma Kosha, you will also find that these six uh, supernatural powers, they all based on wisdom. Wisdom is their svabhava, their nature. But the wisdom of the Buddha is, uh, of course, unlimited. And uh, the Kumara Jiva, he is the propounder of the ultimate wisdom, the wisdom of the perfectly realized Buddhas who have eliminated not only the uh, defilements, but also the vasanas, the uh, potential for defilements. So they become one with the purity of the mind. And purity of the mind is the subject matter according to the tradition of the third turning of the wheel of Dharma. Okay, so uh, that much for today. And uh, we can uh, transfer merits for the benefit of all sentient beings. And uh, our text, the Kumara Jiva uh, treatise uh, on the uh, practice of jhana will be completed. So uh, if you're interested, you can study some other texts which are available. Um, the uh, Somaya University has published one, uh, another short uh, treatise of Kumarajiwa, uh, which is called, uh, hmm? how it is called in English? Outlining the way to reflect. Outlining the way to the? To reflect. To reflect. Huh? Then there is the translation of uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, Tajo Sanmei. Huh? Yeah. Zochan Sanmei. Okay. So uh, there is an English translation also. And of course, uh, these uh, big works of Kumarajiwa they have been practically all translated. So you can find the Lamotte's translation of the Taj Tolun uh, into French, which has been also translated into English. Hmm? And you can find the Lotus Sutra and uh, so on, uh, Amitayu Sutta, and uh, also this uh, Abhidharma work, Abhidharma work. So uh, let us do the transference of the merit and we hope that this uh, Kumarajiva treatise which we have uh, worked on with the help of Supriya and Chetso we will be able to publish next year hmm? sometime so you can all have the book it will be published by the Somaya University right hmm? yes Bhante and uh... I don't know, there seems to be some disturbance. Hang on. Uh, but I just want to say on behalf of all of us, uh, how grateful you are that you, you know, took this time to teach Bhante straight through from February to now. And uh, it's been a very uh, rich experience uh, because you bring to bear so many different traditions on this one text, if we had to just study it on our own. I don't think we would have got such a broad uh, view onto these uh, matters. Uh, Bande, there is just one question in the chat box. Would you have a few minutes okay. to answer? Still battery is going on. Can you yeah. hear my can you hear my voice and was yes. it clear in my teaching? Was yes. it clear enough to be recorded so that you can listen to it? Uh, yes. How to use moon as a meditation object? If you how can, to use, how to the use moon. moon as a meditation object? Well, it is a, 
as all the other uh, casinas, you watch the moon with open eyes, then again close your eyes and visualize the moon in front of you with the closed eyes. If the image is not clear, you keep on eyes open again and you repeat to yourself the light, 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 aloka, 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 to stabilize your image. When you train like this and your meditation is uh, your uh, samadhi power is increasing, your concentration power is increasing, then you will be able to see very clearly this uh, moon image, especially the full moon image in uh, your mind. You don't need to look outside when you have stabilized it. When it is fully stable, then it will be mental image clear enough to be united with it and then you can see it if you can see it in this way at the base of your mind also so you can also understand the bhavanga theory or the theory of the basic mind which explains the continuity of the mind because the mind is appearing and disappearing in each and every moment so the criticism of Buddhism from the non-Buddhist school is all concerned with this continuity of the mind because they explain as the impermanence as being the only nature, true nature of this world. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we know you have a difficult situation there with uh, not much power and you have to conserve yeah, the, the battery. Power, power is still there. So uh, if there are any other questions, we can talk. That would and, be uh, lovely. As long as, as, long as I am at, at 70 still. Huh? So it's not going so fast, uh, the battery as I thought. Okay. So I still have plenty of time. If anyone has any question, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, this is the last session uh, on these uh, lecture series, which uh, Bhante was teaching the uh, Marjiva's uh, meditation manual. So uh, he's going to be traveling after this. Uh, please do ask. Uh, you can all unmute yourself. Powering on. Uh, while they're thinking, Bhante, can I ask one question? Uh, sure. So, uh, you know, he sees into the future, he sees into the past. Uh, is this a, just a question of uh, how we are to understand time? I, uh, I don't know uh, if time has been dealt with in any of these uh, texts, Bhante. Is there something you can guide well, us? The, time, the nature of uh... Samsara, the nature of uh, conventional truth, the nature of existence is the all in time. But the time of the ancients was not uh, like uh, our time in uh, seconds, minutes, hours, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had a deep uh, knowledge of astrology. Mm -hmm. So uh, Still in Chinese and Indian tradition on the astrology, they are based on astrology, on observation of the stars. Uh, they could uh, produce a quite precise system of uh, 360 days in the year hmm? and uh, uh, 29 days in the month. Hmm? So they could calculate quite precisely. And then we divide into days, and the days divide in, in India into yama. Hmm? There were three yamas, and uh, which would correspond to four hours in our uh, calculation. And these hours again, these yamas were again divided into uh, uh, smaller and smaller. Uh, uh, units of time until the smallest, which is called kshana. From kshana, you go up again 
from Shana to Muhurta and again up, up until uh, the, uh, in India, especially famous for uh, incredible calculation of big numbers. Then you go on to Niyuta and the whole cosmos can be interpreted by infinite numbers. This is the wonder of Indian mathematics. Uh, you have the numbers, ah, the Vijali <laughs> Agya. Wonderful. So you can have some heat also then? Yeah, you can have some heat. Oh, that is good. And so uh, anyway, mm -hmm. all the, this is a proof that all good things are coming and going, all the bad things are also <laughs> coming and going. Nowadays we hear more bad things than good things, but who knows if uh, this is not the prelude to many, many good things we will hear in the future. Hmm? So please never despair. Uh, the bad things, they have also their importance, just like a good thing. So we should not be excited about good things, not be despairing about bad things, and we will get over this uh, all trouble without having much uh, need to torture ourselves by uh, irrelevant thinking. So, uh, can I ask one, one last yes, gift from yes. you for us? So when we were in Sakarwadi over the weekend, one of our students, because it was the full moon, uh, which marks the great passing of Venerable Chariputra. So yes. we, we remembered for him. The, and, for the Purnima, you were. Yes, uh, Kartik Purnima. Now, since you were speaking of the Abhinyas, you now uh, Venerable Mogalana was supposed to be, especially the divine eye, if I recall. Yes, uh, the divine eye is shared... more Anuruddha. Anuruddha is ah, the yes. number one divine eye. But I, if yes. I recall, uh, Venerable Mogalana also saw some demon sitting on Sariputta's head, no? In, I think it is yes. in the Udana. Yes. Uh, could Very you share good. some of these stories? They are lovely. Oh, there are so many of these stories. Anyone, anyone. With, with Mogalana? Yes, yes, please. The Mogalana, uh, the, he was the master of uh, the Idis. Huh? He was the first in the Idis. And there was one uh, very, very uh, miser merchant who had the incredible loads of money, but he himself, he ate uh, only uh, very, very inferior food and never let others see how much riches he had. He was always hiding it in front of him. So once he was uh, cooking a powa, huh, right? And uh, because with using ghee and using good material. So he asked uh, the servant to cook it at the highest uh, level of his house where nobody could see. But of course, Mogalana, <laughs> Mogalana could see it and he went uh, uh, there begging huh, in order to uh, uh, teach him uh, that uh, the actually the divine eye and the eye of wisdom can see everything. He has nothing to hide. And so he could use uh, his uh, divine powers also to teach him the Dharma. So he became ashamed of his behavior and uh, became more generous. So this is very great use of this divine eye, which can see through the walls also. Uh, in uh, Burma, I will tell you one story huh? which I have heard when I was in Burma because Burma is one of these uh, fortunate places on this earth where still these uh, uh, superior powers of meditation, like in Tibet and Burma especially, they are still quite common. 
uh, less and less, but still you can find uh, some teachers who possess them. And uh, there was a monk in, uh, in, uh, in one state hmm? who was very famous. He was uh, kind of a he was very good in meditation, but uh, very greedy. So he used his divine eye uh, for his supporters to read uh, the uh, lottery ticket. So he uh, read in the, uh, he could read the lottery ticket and he could know which uh, lottery ticket is the winning one. So he became very, very rich and built a, a great vihara. And, but he used the supernatural power to enrich himself. And this can happen also. We all know the story of Devadatta, who had all this power, including the divine eye, but especially the idis. But he used them to do a lot of evil. And uh, all powerful person can do a lot of evil, but they can also do a lot of good. That's why when one has a powerful mind, like Angulimala, one can turn from the worst evil into the highest good and become an Arahant. And his, the traces of his uh, evil are all washed out when we have opened the eye of wisdom. And the eye of wisdom is the eye of emptiness. It cannot be any other eye. Okay, so shall we do the transference of merit? Okay. And uh, Chetso has not come today, huh? No, she has not joined. So I but think we will I, will, with her. I will be uh, uh, traveling on on Sunday, huh? mm -hmm. and when I am in the U.S., I will try to get uh, the SIM card, huh? yeah, and uh, so that we can still communicate. Okay, and maybe maybe we can continue. Okay, uh, I will I will be very busy in. Uh, uh, in December until middle of January. After middle of January, I do uh, the, you remember the Dhammarama? Huh? Yes. So you're meeting her? Yes, I'm staying one month in her place. Where? And she wants to in Houston, Texas. Oh, wonderful. Okay. It's a very warm place. Yes. So she she wants uh, she's working in the uh, Institute of Chinese Medicine and she wants to handle me and uh, some other people to help me to fix my uh, night urination problem. Okay. Especially in the cold weather like this, I'm always uh, have to as soon as I drink something, I have to go to the toilet. Yeah. yeah. Very troublesome. Yeah. And at night, I always get up, and, uh, so I'm very uh, uh, afraid of the, the cold weather. Yes, yeah, Okay, Supriya. Okay. So Thank let you. us do the transference of merit, and we keep in touch. Yes, please. Everybody uh, who has uh, the wise and enlightened mind, and so we let us try to work for it together by mutual encouragement. We will all become enlightened one day. Okay. Eta, Vata, Chame, Sampatam, Punya Sampatam, Sabbe, Deva, Amimodantu, Sabha Sampatu Siddhiya. Eta, Vata, Chame, Sampatam, Punya Sampatam, Sabbe, Bhuta, Amimodantu. Eta, Wata, Chame, Sampata, Puna Sampata, Sabbe, Satta, Amimodan, Saba Sampati Sidia, Aka, Satta, Chabumata, Deva, Naga, Mahidika, Punyanta, Manimoditwa, Chimaka, Tulukasa, 
ಆಕ ಸತ್ತ ಚಬುಮಠ ದೇವ ನಾಗ ಮಹಿಬಿಕ ಪುಣ್ಯಂತ ಅನುಮೋದಿಸುವ ಚಿದಂಬರ ಕಂತು ದೈಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆಕ ಸತ್ತ ಚಬುಮಠ ದೇವ ನಾಗ ಮಹಿಬಿಕ ಪುಣ್ಯಂತ ಅನುಮೋದಿಸುವ ಚಿದಂಬರ ಕಂತು ದೈಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದೇವೋ ವಸತು ಕಾಲೇನ ಸಸ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಲೋಕೋಚ ಶೀತೋ ಭವತು ಲೋಕೋಚ ರಾಜ ಭವತಿ ದಮ್ಮಿಕೋ ಸಾಧು 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 So I am leaving and uh, we keep in touch. Hmm? Thank you so much Bhante and great journey and uh, yes, we keep in touch. Thank okay. you for everything Bhante. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you also for everything. I was so happy to see the crowds in the Sakharwadi. Yeah. So it should be, uh, we should make a good use of it. Hmm? they will come and it was beautiful because the teenagers came you know they are usually the most difficult lot on sunday yes. morning at 6:15 they came bante also vesaka vesaka and nalanda they were there also no they have moved from the colony now so they were not there but there is a young boy called sumed from that time they have all mm-hmm. grown up bante they have grown up so much <laughs> Yes, but they come in from time to time. No? Yes, okay. yes, they come. Hmm? Okay, so, uh, so uh, uh, take care and uh, talk to you later. Huh? Okay? okay? Thank you, Bhante. Okay, thank you, Bhante. Thank you, thank you everybody. And uh, go down. Go down. Okay, thank you, Bhante Ji. Okay. We will stay in the same place, Gautam. Huh? हा बंत जी अभी आपका व्हाट्सएप नंबर भी है मेरे पास मेरा भी होगा तो तुम भी कुछ सकरवादी के लिए तो कुछ करो हाँ हाँ बंत जी जरूर कुछ ये पाली उपदेश हाँ या या हाँ बंत ओके थैंक यू बंते नमस्ते